Hi, everybody. Welcome to another webinar here. Uh, I've got as my guest today, Dr. Cameron Moorhead, who is a veterinarian out in Georgia. Hi, Cameron. How you doing? Good. How you doing today, Jared? Doing great, man. Doing great. So, uh, yeah, awesome. let's go ahead and let's jump right into it. Um, also, I want to know um, if you guys have any questions at all. I want to make sure you guys can just ask them. We'll go ahead and get any attendee questions answered immediately. So uh, to start off, can you tell us a little bit about your practice? Okay, so I started my practice in January of 1995. Mm -hmm. And I started it um, as strictly a conventional practice. Um, and then I eventually developed it into more of an integrative practice. So we do conventional as well as uh, holistic, holistic alternative uh, work. So, nice. yes. That's awesome. So what uh, specific things makes your practice stand out compared to other veterinary practices in your area? Well, we do conventional, but we also have a focus on nutrition, uh, particularly nutrition uh, response testing, and we do some uh, VOM, which stands for veterinary orthopedic manipulation. So we do some some chiropractic work, but we do a lot of uh, nutritional work uh, that I think kind of sets us apart because there are some uh, holistic practices in Atlanta. Um, but I don't know if there's a lot of practices that do both the holistic side as well as the conventional side because we do we do some medicine and we do surgery as well as um, holistic medicine gotcha okay that's pretty awesome um so how did how does the nrt work with the patients you see like the animals you see does it like you know tell us a little bit about that well in uh just nutrition response testing on humans, you're using a muscle test. You're using muscle testing or applied kinesiology. So in human, uh, the practice of nutrition response testing with humans, you can have them hold up a muscle that you can push against to see if you get any, um, any reactions or reflexive reactions to that muscle either staying strong or getting weak. But in animals, you have to use a human indirect tester that's mm -hmm. in contact with the animal and you're checking or putting pressure on reflexes along the surface of the animal's body and you're seeing if there's a change in muscle response in the human while you're checking the animal. So as a result, you need to have a human that has um, fairly bio, that is fairly bioenergetically balanced in order to be able to evaluate the animal by using the muscle test. So it's a little, you also do that on, on babies as well, because unless you can get them to hold their arm up and, and match against your pressure, you have to use a human for babies as well. So. It, it adds a little bit extra something to it, but it can be done very successfully. That's awesome. And what kind of uh, patient results do you get from um, the animals you test? Like, how does it work out? I don't think we have enough time to tell you <laughs> how successful this is with animals. It, it is very, it's very accurate. It's very uh, precise. Um, you are basically evaluating the energetic, um, the energetic, um, what I want to say, how efficient is the, the energy systems of the body. You're basically evaluating that. And because you can do that, you can, you know, you can treat, you can get these pets healthier, but as a result, a lot of conditions that pets have, such as heart conditions, um, 
uh, joint joint issues, uh, issues uh, like uh, seizure type activity or or imbalances in the energetic systems. You can you can help these patients get better and and they ultimately get a whole lot healthier. We don't treat we don't treat diseases. We treat the body and then the body gets healthier and then a lot of times those conditions those conditions get better. So it's 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 a huge gamut of um you know conditions you can help pets get better from. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. And um how like oh sorry, go ahead. Doug, go ahead. I'm... Oh, okay, gotcha. Um so when did you first get involved with nutrition response testing? Okay, good question. So here's here's how I got into it. I was I was hoping you would ask that. Back in the mid nineties, I was having some some health challenges, some fertility issues. And I had gone to a urologist and had had the semen analysis and nothing was nothing was swimming. Not only that, there were very few swimmers in that analysis. So I went to, I was referred to a chiropractor that was doing muscle testing at the time. Hmm. And he was doing a technique called CRA or contact reflex analysis. And he did an analysis on me and after using the muscle testing. And after the analysis, he put me on specific nutritional supplements, but not just supplements for that particular area. Um, he put me on supplements for thyroid, for adrenals, for uh, the, testic the testicular area, um, even pituitary. And I took those supplements and made some changes in my diet. And then I went back to the urologist four months later and had a, a, a follow-up semen analysis. And the picture was totally different. Wow. There were a whole lot more life in that particular analysis. And a whole lot more were, there were a whole lot more swimmers, so to speak. So I was like, wow, this is incredible. And he told me that, you know, you can do this for animals. And I said, well, how can I do it for animals? The animals aren't going to hold their arm up and allow and, and resist as you push on it. And he said, well, you have to use an indirect tester to test for the animals. And I, so I was like, wow. So I started doing, uh, going to these particular seminars. And the procedure was a little bit difficult to learn. And then the chiropractor told me about a gentleman, a chiropractor that was down in Clearwater, Florida, that had uh, created this this technology called nutrition response testing. And he said, you should check it out. And I said, yeah, I'll check it out. So I bought, this is Dr. Eulen, and I bought, so I bought his, his videos and watched them over and over. Then they were back then they were doing uh, seminars. They were doing one day, three day seminars where people would go or he would go all over the country and introduce this to different practitioners. So I went to a couple of those in Atlanta, then learned from that, watched those videos. Then they had um, the intermediate seminar down in Clearwater, learn from that, and then I did the advanced clinical training, which is the highest level of nutrition response testing in 2007, finished it in 2008. And from there, it's just been, from there, it's just been a rocket ride. It's when patients come in your, 
patients come in your office, of course, the client has to bring the patient in in veterinary medicine. There would be nothing. There would be nothing that we couldn't handle. I'm not saying cure, but there would be nothing, no situation, unless they were, you know, just on their last leg and that that, that type of thing. Right. But there was so many things, so many conditions and situations that we could handle um, if they, if the client allowed the patient to follow the program. So um, that's how I got that's how I got started in in nutrition response testing is that I had health challenges that I saw resolve, and this wasn't back then. This wasn't even I don't think nutrition response testing had even been developed in the in the mid '90s. I know Dr. Eulen was working on some things, but mm-hmm. but now with nutrition response testing, it's such a systematic uh, approach that you know it's really easy easy to do. It's a step by step procedure. So, so that's how I got. I got kind of long winded, but that's how I got <laughs> no, into no, it. No, no, that's that's great, man. Um, so, like, how long have you known Dr. Hewlin? I've known Dr. Hewlin since I did the I did the first advanced clinical training in in uh, October of 2007. So I think I'd met him shortly before that. So I've known him probably since 2006 because I've came down to do the intermediate training and I believe that's the first time I officially met him was probably uh, 2006. So I've known him What's that? Sixteen years. Wow. Dang, man. Okay. So you, you've been you've been doing <laughs> you've been doing nutrition response testing. You've been in practice for quite a long time. Yeah, I've, I've been in practice since 1988. Wow. But um, and started the, this practice here in 1995. But I didn't. I didn't really. I didn't even know about acupuncture and nutrition and uh, chiropractic. Uh, I didn't in Chinese herbs and all those great healing modalities. I didn't even know about that until you know 1996, 1990. So I started going. Well, I went to a chiropractor earlier for a back problem, but I'm talking about it from the nutritional standpoint. I didn't even know that there was, you know, this whole, whole new world of, you know, getting patients better without, you know, doing the, you know, the the drugs and surgery route. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that those aren't needed, but I didn't know about how to help patients truly get well until you know, 96 or 97, but I knew there was, deep down inside, I knew there had to be, there had to be something else out there to help, help my patients get well. And I, and I found it in, in nutrition response to nice. Just, you know, you see the, yeah. like Dr. Ewan says, routine miracles. I mean, we see routine miracles just about every day and you just expect it after a while so it's pretty cool that's awesome man i have a question coming in from fabiola reyes uh she says hello i'm very confident with using standard process with animals but i am not 100 percent sure how to use systemic formulas i have hesitation due to the added vitamins especially the ones that are fat soluble um one second just gotta get a little lost in the question here. So, specifically the ones that are fat soluble. Uh, specifically looking for heartworm prevention for the canine client I see. Uh, are we talking about? Are we talking about heartworm prevention. It's not the conventional heartworm prevention. We're talking about more of a natural. A right. Natural... Yeah. Cause she, yeah, because she was asking um, basically like 
she's confident with using the standard process products, but she's hesitant to use systemic formulas on animals. So is there any kind of guidance you can give her on that? Well, believe it or not, we we muscle test everything, including heartworm preventatives. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of them out there now. Um, you know, these, um, I can't think of the conventional ones, but we use ivermectin which is ivermectin, we muscle test ivermectin for every patient that's on heartworm preventative and it muscle tests really well. So that's why we we prescribe ivermectin a lot. But having said that, systemic formulas, they have really good um, anti-parasite or, or uh, herbals that help the body handle parasites, the VRMs, the one, two, three, fours, whether it's VRM capsule or CX, the CX VRMs, which is the mother formulas uh, for the VR, for um, for parasites, test really good. She needs to be able to muscle test, which I think she can. I think she probably can, but it's a cycle. You want to cycle them five, uh, ten days on, five days off, and whichever VRM test. The one, two, three, four, you want to take that through at least uh, three to four cycles of 10 days on, five days off. Because we, I treated um, a pit bull, her name is Princess, and she did not want to do the conventional uh, heartworm treatment. Um, the imidacide is, a, is the adulticide that kills the adult heartworms in the, in the heart. Um, hmm. And she didn't want to see the dog had heart had actual heartworms in the heart, and she didn't want to do that. So we said, okay, well let's go with the VRMs. So we muscle tested, and I forget which which VRM tested, but whichever one tested, we test the dosage, and then we did cycles, ten days on, five days off, and I think we did uh, three to four cycles, and we went back and and. Uh, blood tested for the heartworms and the heartworms were gone and so the vrms the systemic formulas work but but i would recommend that you do several cycles 10 days on five five days off and just keep doing that until the pet if it tested heartworm positive tested about three to four months later, and a lot of times they'll be heartworm negative. And you wow. just put them on a preventative after that. So the systemic formula VRMs are powerful. They're powerful and they're safe. So um, it's, and as far as supportive therapy, I like to use your, um, your standard process Usually, Cataplex G is really good because it causes vasodilation. So, when those heartworms are dying in the system, you have you have nice open blood vessels, so you can get the fragments of so the, the body can get the fragments of the uh, dead and dying heartworms out with the blood vessels more open. So, Cataplex G works really good good for. Uh, Heartworm cases, whether you're using the conventional heartworm treatment or whether you're using um, an alternative treatment. Nice. Okay, well, that seems yeah. to have answered uh, Fabiola's question. Uh, she said, thank you very much, Dr. Morad. So, yeah, good question. That. Yeah. And then, uh, Josie, I got your request. Um, we're actually going to have a little announcement on that later. So, uh, just wait till the end of the webinar on that. Um, we've got another question here from uh, Cindy Harrington, and that's my that's my buddy right there. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, she says hi, Dr. <laughs> Cameron. Thank oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, she says hi, Dr. Cameron. Thank you for helping me when my cat May was alive. I have a new cat Stella. She's in good health, but I haven't taken her to the vet yet. I know you must test the specific vaccinations for pets. Uh, do you advise on how I should handle the vaccinations for Stella with a possible local vet? 
Um, well, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think here's how I, here's my approach to that, and it could be considered controversial, but I think vac vaccines are are a, what I call a necessary evil. Mm -hmm. um, I don't over vaccinate anymore like I did when I first came out of vet school because that's that's what we did. But I think some vaccines, particularly you know a few of them, and in certain amounts, I I think they can be beneficial. Um, are we dealing with a cat that that's going to be strictly inside or a cat that's going to be going in and out? Can you ask Cindy um, that? Yeah, I mean, she didn't specifically say, but she, oh, no, she said inside. There we go. Okay. So take it for what it's worth. If we have a cat that's going to be protected and be inside, um, of course, the, the rabies, at least in Georgia, I don't know about Pennsylvania, but the rabies is a legal, it's a legal requirement in the state of Georgia. So I recommend that and probably just a little bit. And I, I, I don't know how I can quantify that specifically because we we have certain dosages that we use, but um, possibly the, the FBRCP, which is the feline distemper shot because that's airborne but I would not do anything more than the FBRCP and maybe the rabies when the pet, when the cat hits about four months and do the, there's a pure vax, there's a pure vaccine that is for cats and it's so, it has so few adjuvants in it that it very rarely is gonna cause sarcomas and, you know, cancers in the, in the body like say your your regular rac, uh, rabies vaccine could so that's what I, I would do just minimal probably the three in one FERCP and and the rabies when when the uh, when the pet gets old enough and then she's able to to muscle test her cat um, you know for the proper supplementation um, you know, multivitamin, mineral, multi-mineral vitamin from uh, standard process to help with the immune system. So, okay. just a little, just a little bit of vaccine can go a long way in my, in my experience. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. I have another question coming Uncle in. Two. Okay. Oh, no, no, you go ahead. No, I was going to say also too. What really works good for cats to help them kind of detox uh, from the shot is to test for your energetics, um, your energetics tones, because they're they're very good um, at just kind of cleaning up. The, they're very good drainage products to just kind of help clean up any any vaccines vaccine residues that might be um, you know that, that might be uh, uh, developed in the in the cat's body after the shots. So that's all I wanted to say. Makes sense. Got another question coming in from Gail Chen. Uh, she says, "Do you use ACX with VRMs?" If they if they test, sometimes it is. Um, it's more what I see more, what I use more than just the ACX is either the TACX, the, uh, which is the tincture, and the CXACX, which is the mother formula. Um, ACX, not so much. ACP sometimes, but really in dogs and cats, is usually the TACX or the CXACX, whichever one tests. Um, the other thing is with what did you say the VRMs? Uh, yeah, the, VRMs. He was at VRMs. Yeah. Um, what also test are also the the tones, and 
um, sometimes they need a probiotic, like like lactans or something like that. But she, that's a good question because yeah, either the ACX or the CAC, CX ACX test really good. Also, the HVS products, HVS Parasite, that sometimes tests good, OS, RR, and, and HVS Stress, those, are, those also can act as drainage, drainage formulas as well, and no dairy or sugar. Gotcha. I <laughs> uh, got another question coming in from Cindy. Uh, somewhat on the same subject. Uh, should I also give her a drop per day of back cord and a tone? Back cord, I don't, back cord doesn't test that well for me. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't think, I don't think, as long as they test for it, I don't think you can have too many, too much tone on board. The good thing about cats is, they don't need a lot of stuff, a drop here, a drop there. So if they test for a tone, then it's, it's literally, a, a, I very rarely see them test for more than one drop twice a day. They just don't, they just don't need a whole lot. And then it, then once, the good thing about cats too, and dogs, but cats especially, is they'll, you put that drop in the food, and they're mm -hmm. going for it, and then they get to a point where they're not eating the food anymore. And it's like the owner's like, now my cat won't eat the food. And it turns out when we when they come in for their follow up, they're not testing for that particular product anymore. So they innately know what they need and what they don't because they will absolutely refuse to to eat the food or drink the water if they're no longer testing for it. It's, it's just kind of uncanny. So, but it, the bottom line is, yes, tones are really good for cats, but in super small amounts and usually not for that long, just depending on the, just depending on the individual case. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that makes a lot of sense in that one. Um, Next question here. Hey, Dr. Cameron, great to see you. Do you have, uh, do you do a rabies titter before immunizing? Do I do rabies titers? Yeah. You said titers? No. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if the owner, if the owner requests it, <clears throat> then we do it. But I don't know how much it is. Who, 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 who asked the question? Uh, that's Gail Shen. Oh yeah, Gail. That's my classmate. Okay, so um, if they ask, if they if they request it, we'll do it. But it's pretty expensive, so we so we always muscle test it. We muscle test it, and yeah, we give we give them yeah. If it's okay, we do. If it's not okay, uh, we hold off. Sometimes we'll have to space out vaccines for certain animals they, they just don't they just seem not to tolerate you know all these different shots at one time so sometimes we'll space it out sometimes we'll put a detox on board like vax cord if it tests uh, along with the tone but i can't remember the last time we did uh, rabies titers um i think i think it's probably a good thing, but it's kind of cost prohibit prohibitive uh, in our situation. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And I got another question coming in from uh, Megan Neidfelt. Um, what about heartworm preventative if I'm not a DVS and cannot access ivermectin? Um, heartworm preventative. What you? You, is she, she's talking about going with with a um, a more alternative or holistic route for heart for heartworm preventative. That's so right. There's a bunch of yeah, there's a there's a bunch of different heartworm preventatives out there, but she won't be able to get it. Not probably 
not being a veterinarian. So yeah, it goes back to the VRMs. The VRMs. Some I know some people use black walnut, um, black walnut hulls, or I think it's called black walnut. Some people use that. That's a Medi Herb product. Product. But the VRMs, the VRMs work good. It, depending on which one muscle test, they they work really well. So I recommend either the either the capsules or um, the CX VRMs, and whichever one tests, just just give those, um, you know, as as they test. If if they have heartworms, then you want to do the cycle, you know, the the cycles, ten days on, five days off. But if they just as a preventative, I found that. The VRMs on, on a on a daily basis or every other day, they're they're usually, you know, they're usually pretty good. It's pretty good a, a parasite product. I'm not going to ever say, well, it's, it's you're not going to get heartworms if you use VRMs because I'm just I like my license. But um, <laughs> yeah, you the VRMs are, are are good products for you know help help the body handle parasites. Sweet. Okay. And uh, what products do you yep. use primarily? Like, do you use the uh, standard pet prep, pet products, or do you, you mean for use our, what for heartworms or which for which? Oh, this is a separate question. This is uh, just in general, like oh. what kind of products you use. This is from Nancy Zion. Uh, she was wondering if you use like the standard process pet products primarily, or do you use the human products? Oh. As well? Believe it or not. Most of the products we use are human. The ones that we reach for are the human products. They seem to be a little bit more specific with, for what we're trying to handle in the beginning. Then once they, you know, the body goes through three phases of healing, which, which is addressed, which is talked about very extensively in nutrition response testing. But what we find is once the body gets to the maintenance phase where we don't need to see the patient that often, I find that the pet products work really well when the patient is, is in maintenance phase. With the exception of the canine dermal support, sometimes that canine, do you, you have an itchy pet coming in and you do nutrition response testing on them, and even if they're just itchy and they're not on a nutrition response testing program, that canine dermal support, I think part of it is they have Antronex, which is, uh, you know, has a has, has an antihistamine uh, effect in it, you know, from the, uh, the, yak, the Yakatron that's in it. That's the, that's the name of the ingredient in Antronex, but um, that canine dermal support, it, 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 sometimes it tests really well right off the bat when, a, when an itchy pet is coming in. Hmm. Um, we routinely, for, for um, just puppies, all our patients in general, I like to test for canine whole body support, canine adrenal support and canine uh, cardiac support along with the human cattle in and cattle and chewable just for general multivitamin mineral support. Because um, if you, a lot of times if you start these guys on, of course with good diet, but if you start these guys on a good multivitamin mineral like some of the canine products, feline products too, but if they're on a good multivitamin mineral, they just tend to have their bodies are just biochemically balanced, just in general, just just going forward in life. Put them on a good multivitamin mineral supplement. Um, of course, test if you can muscle test, muscle test them for it. Uh, but it won't hurt even if you just put them on, you know, some canine whole body support or cattle in or that type of thing so but to answer the question 
usually when they come in with a situation, a, a health challenge, I find that the human products are just a little bit more able to zero zero in on what you're trying to get started. So, gotcha. Yeah. I got a question coming in from uh, Susan Duvet. Uh, she wants to know um, how to test deep layers of blocking, uh, especially switching with pets. So blocking and switching. Right. So the, the, for blocking the um, same, all the modes, all the levels are in the exact same place. There's a little, you know, dogs and cats have a little bitty, this is usually an Audi, but they have a little bitty, um, they have a little bitty button that, I should have brought my example in here. Hold on, let me go get it. Hold on one second. <laughs> Awesome, guys. So just so you guys know, um, I do have quite a few questions coming in. So um, if I haven't gotten to your question yet, I will. Um, you know, we're just obviously getting to every single person's question. Yeah, it's a little bitty but Sorry, this, this dog got in a bad accident. So <laughs> we're fixing he's on He's on the men. But anyway. <laughs> So there's a little button right there between both halves of the of the thorax, and they have a little button there, and you just want to put your the palm of your hand right there, just like you do a human, and you'll hit it. That's that's the that's the first level for blocking. Yeah, and then it's the same it's the same with people here. Ear, ear over here. Let them breathe in your mouth, in your, in the palm of your hand. I use the pad, the um, for the palm to palm and the front legs. I don't do the back legs. I just have never seen any reason to do that. And you also can do the palm to booty, and then have them close their, have them close their eyes, close their eyes and do it, laying, standing, and sitting. Same as Pete. Same, same as if he had a penis, vulva, vulva or penis, palm to penis or vulva. The same position. As far as as far as switching, I had the indirect tester do the switching modes while they had their hand on the pet. Hmm. So it's thumb. Thumb pinky, thumb pinky ring, left hand, thumb pinky, thumb pinky ring, right hand, eyes closed. If you have to do it standing, standing, sitting, and lying, I don't go to the, I usually don't have to go to the 108 different switching uh, uh, levels, but usually thumb pinky, thumb pinky ring, eyes closed, standing, sitting, um, Standing, sitting, lying, and you'll get you'll get it. I've had one patient. We had to do all of them. That was a German Shepherd, but that's that's very rare. Wow. So, um, yeah. Okay. So, so, so it's that's really your that's your block. Gotcha. So technique wise, it's yeah. really basically the same thing. It's not very different from testing a human. I tell people this, I tell uh, AC, uh, nutrition response testing practitioners this a lot. They're like, well, how do I, it's the same, it's the same thing. You just, you might have to, you know, chase them under the table or something, but, you know, it's the same thing. It's the, it's the exact same, it's the exact same thing. Uh, fortunately, well, I'm thinking about the stressors now, but um, fortunately, I haven't had to do a lot of uh, belly button work uh, with the uh, laser, 
lasering those types of things, but uh, I mean, so I'm sorry, scars. Sorry. Um, fortunately, I don't. I don't have to. Seems like we don't have to. We don't have a lot of scar issues when we're doing the the 13 steps of nutrition response testing. But most of the most of this procedure is the exact same. You know, it's the exact same thing. Wow. Well, that's that's yeah. really good to know. Good. Yeah. Um, I got another question coming in from Susan Duvet. Um, she her question is: Are there any Santa process, Medier products, systemic formulas, or self-work products that need to be avoided in pets? I heard wormwood should not be used in horses. Do you have a list of absolute nots to be used in pets? In, you said pets or cat? You said pets. Pets, yeah. Yeah, I. The one that comes to mind is your gar is your garlic. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't I don't think there's any just super con contra contraindications. Um, I find that a lot of the many or a lot of a lot of the systemic formulas, but a lot of the many herbs, um, they tend to be they they don't tend to muscle test well, so I don't reach for many herb a lot in in animals. I'm not saying they're they're not great products, but um, the one that comes to mind mostly is your um you know your garlic i think that can be a little a little aggressive mm -hmm. but um good thing about herbs whether they be um medi herb or whether they be the north american uh, systemic formula herbs is that animals usually don't they they test off, even if they test for it, they test off of them fairly qu fairly quickly. Usually mm -hmm. sometimes you might be using it maybe a week, maybe two weeks, and then they test off of it. They really start resisting it. The owner can't get it in them because they're just fighting them to get it in them. So they don't usually test, they don't usually test that long. So... But I'm more of a homeopathic, you know, I'm not a trained homeopath, but I find that the homeopathic products, the um, energetics, the HVSs, those really are safe and they're very, they're very effective. So, I'll, and then of course, when their standard process to me is the flagship of, or, of, uh, of supplements. So eventually you want to get them all on whole food. You want to get them on real food. And that's where the standard process is, uh, where that comes in. So, but I'm, I don't, I probably don't use a heck of a lot of herbs in any way. Because they can be kind of aggressive in my, you know, in my experience. Hmm. I see. So the pets tend to do best with just the, the foods, like the, the basic stuff, essentially. Right. Makes sense. And that brings me to, that brings us to the importance of diet. Mm -hmm. You can have the, you can give them the greatest herbs in the world, the greatest home, uh, home, homeopathics, whole food supplements. But if they're eating crappy food, you're not going to get the results that you want to get. We are what we eat. Yeah. So I think Definitely that's left out in this. Yeah, that's left out in this um, this society that we live in. It's like, oh, take this miracle supplement, take that miracle supplement. But if they're eating ho hos and bonbons <laughs> every day. They're not going to get better. Sorry. 
Makes sense. Opinion, take, take it for what you prefer. Right. So. Well, do you have any yeah. like raw food? This is another question from uh, Serena. Uh, she was wondering if you had any raw food diets you would recommend for cats or dogs. Yes. I have a, we had, we came up with a good foods list that had, that categorized into three categories. And the way, the reason we did it like this is because some people are not going to feed their dogs raw food. Some people are not going to feed their dogs a cooked food diet. They're only going to feed them kibble. So we came up with the best kib the best kibble foods that we've researched, the best cooked foods, and then the best raw foods. So of course of course I think the ultimate goal is to get them on a raw food diet, as clean a diet as possible. But if they're not gonna be if the owner's not gonna do it, here's the best kibble foods I think are out there. Or here's the best cooked food. So yes. Um I have a, we have a list of um, really good raw foods. The first, the one that comes to mind probably is Primal. Primal makes a really good dog food, uh, raw food. And then um, Stella and Chewy's, Stella and Chewy's not bad. Steve's Real Foods is good. Uh, what's the other one? Um, shoot, that's why I came up with the list because 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 we got Grandma Lucy's is pretty good. Um, so there's there's sep there's several of, of them out there that are good. So, hmm. but I can I can get y'all the I, I think I may have gotten y'all the list before, but I can get I can send her the list or give it to you guys so you guys can get it to her yeah i think that actually would be cool if we can get the uh the list of that so we can send it to everybody attending here uh if they want that if yeah that's and remember that's just remember that's just my opinion it's my opinion only by researching and also muscle testing many many animals for all these different foods um so it's not you know take it for what it's worth but these foods are going to be better typically than your grocery store brand foods. Right. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, going yep. back to an earlier question, um, we were talking about tones, and uh, Serena, Serena wanted to know uh, what you meant by that. Talking about, oh, Energetics makes homeopathic products that are called tones and what how they're considered is to be drainage products meaning that they encourage blood flow to certain areas now why they're called tones I, I don't know but I know that through the nutrition response testing we were we learned that they are considered drainage products so they they just they just help to they assist in detoxification and they they uh, assist in just cleaning up tissue. So the the company Energetics calls those products tones. They also have cords um, and they also have uh, what's the other one? They also have um, What's the other? What's the other? I forget the other category. It'll come. It'll come to me. But they're they're more or less um, kind of herbal herbal type products. So that's that's the best answer I have for the tones. So <laughs> cool. Okay. And but, then. Um, but they just. But yeah. I'm sorry. No, you go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, but any any time you're cleaning cleaning up tissue, um, you know tone tones just help to kind of clean up tissue. 
Uh, so they're pretty they're pretty vital. And other companies make other companies make drainage products as well. So, but the energetics tones are really they're really I think every every uh, nutritional practitioner should have that on their you know on their shelves the, the tones or drainage products. Yeah, sounds like that's good to know. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then I got another question from uh, Pamela Patterson. Uh, what would be the best way to treat dental plaque for dogs that won't allow brushing? No sugar in the diet. But anyway, um, there's a product made by Animal, Animal Essentials. It's called Healthy Gums. That's a good product. You can you can either use it to brush the teeth, or uh, put it in put a drop or two in the food, and it tends to. It's got like chamomile and and, and products like that, and it and it it tends to slow tartar tartar formation. Uh, Animal Essentials also makes a product called C Dent, which is a it's like a powder that can be used in dogs and cats. That tends to be a good product. Some people use just a little bit of hydrogen uh, hydrogen peroxide on a toothbrush, a little bit of uh, chlorhexidine as well. That helps. But she's saying that the pet won't let you brush. Then I would check out the healthy gums or the seed dent or the HVS product. It's called HVS Dentals. One of those three should test and keep the sugar out of the diet. Um, also, bones, I'm not talking about chicken bones, but we find that raw high bones tend to be a little, it's, sometimes they're a little sugar cured, so you don't want to do any sugar, but sometimes those dry raw high bones are good or just like a straight beef bone. Giving them something hard to um, give them some hard surface, uh, something to chew on, just to get those surfaces kind of scrubbed, those dental surfaces scrubbed. But if she's looking for a product, HBS Dentals, Animal Essentials, C Dent, or Animal Essentials Healthy Gums, um, one of those is probably going to work. Nice. Okay. And yeah. then. Uh, so we're we're running a little uh a little low on time but i want to get one more question answered then we're going to go to the next part of everything so um we got a question coming in from fabiola what would be your recommendation if there is a lyme diagnosis if there's a what a lyme disease diagnosis nutrition response testing uh <laughs> Yeah, Lyme, Lyme, in my experience, Lyme disease is usually, um, it's an immune system. Yeah, I know there's the, um, the, Lyme, the Lyme agent, the Borrelia burgdorferi, you know, the complex upper parasite kind of deal. But what, I, what we find is get that immune system get that immune system stronger and it's usually something going on in the spleen where the spleen needs to be addressed whether there's parasites in the spleen or whether there's some other immune challenge or sometimes interestingly enough sometimes there's a there's a metal or a chemical in the in the body that's not allowing the body to handle um Lyme disease, and also, and um, I can't stress enough making sure that that diet is really clean, because if it is a parasite, you definitely don't want to be giving them sugar and that type of thing, or or higher bacteria. You definitely want to make sure that that diet is clean, and I've seen sometimes the VRMs work. But I've seen uh, drainage, drainage really be an issue with Lyme disease. Fortunately, we don't see 
a lot of a lot of Lyme, a lot of Lyme issues, but in a lot of cases that's an immune system that's an immune system issue. Mm-hmm. So get that immune system so it's it's more efficient by uh, if you do nutrition response testing, checking to make sure all those organs are uh, are functioning properly, particularly the spleen, the liver, um, and believe it or not, the the adrenals also have an important part in in immune system uh, efficiency. So, but like I said, I don't. We don't see a whole lot of Lyme. Um, we do sometimes we do vaccinate it for it, but we also uh, check. We muscle test to see if the, if the if they're okay for the vaccine, but we don't see a whole lot of. In our nutrition response testing patients, we don't see a whole lot of Lyme. Just don't. But it nice. is mainly immune. It is to, to me. It is mainly an immune system. You know, some some type of immune system derangement going on there. So right. makes sense. Yeah. So if there's uh, one thing that you want uh, the viewers today to take away from, you know, everything that we've covered today, what would it be? Like, what would be your main message to everyone watching? Well, my main message message is this. You want to, or or I wanted to have as many effective tools in the toolkit when a when a patient is is being presented to you. You want as as many tools, and whether it be, you know, sometimes they're going to need surgery, sometimes they're going to need some medicine, but you want to make sure that that you can handle the patient and actually get that patient healthier. So with me, I all I knew there had to be something else out there um, besides you know what I was trained in. Um, and so after I saw after I saw the results on me, I was willing to take a look. Sometimes you have to just you have to be open to just looking to see if something works. If something works and it's workable and it's able to be duplicated by a bunch of people and it's fairly inexpensive, then I think I would like for practitioners to just take a look. You don't have to just take my word of, of, of it at face value. But just we'll be willing to take a look and say, well, what is this about, and how does this work, and who's benefited from it? So that's what I would want people to take away, because there's been amazing, um, there's been amazing healers and amazing practitioners and amazing doctors, but and they could do amazing things. But what Dr. Ulan did. He took he took this this information and made it so that anybody, if they apply it properly and correctly, anybody can produce routine miracles. Anybody can help a patient get well. You don't have to be a superhuman doctor. You just have to apply what he put out there for it to be applied. So that's what I like about it. I don't I don't do I'm not some superhuman doctor. I just apply what nutrition response testing says for us to apply. That's all I do. I don't do anything special. I just do what I've been taught. So, I, so I would I would ask any practitioner to just take a just take a look. It doesn't cost much to just look at it and see if it works. If it works for you, it works for you. If it doesn't. Okay, I got that too. So that's what I would, I don't even know if I would still be practicing if I didn't have this particular tool in my toolkit, because it's a great tool. So that's all I have to say about that. Very nice. 
yeah so um <laughs> earlier <laughs> that, that that's some really good advice there um earlier on we had uh somebody ask i, for, I forgot who it was but we had somebody ask like oh can you show me like a demonstration of an animal and everything like that obviously we don't have quite the the time for that but i want to let you guys know that we have a new online course where dr you and himself actually demonstrates uh, nutrition response testing on an animal uh, actually nine different animals and uh, accompanying that he does he has an ebook which i think you actually helped wrote right didn't you yeah i uh, he asked me for some information uh, on the veterinary side and just some of the cases and experiences that i've had so i i compiled um the some veterinary some veterinary information for him for dogs cats and horses so um yeah i i, I contributed you know i had a small contribution but i contributed to you know the vet those that type of information wow okay so yeah so you got two yeah. different two different things there you got uh the book cameron helped out with uh dr Yulin, and that that's an ebook uh, i think we got the information showing up on your screen there and then um the online course it's, it's a good course it shows you know different cats and dogs being tested and everything like that uh we couldn't uh get anything uh anything bigger unfortunately but you know we got we got nine different ones so that'll give you a, an idea of what it's going to look like you know in your veterinary practice so there we go yeah. <laughs> we're, we're gonna have um well thank you dr moorhead for coming on today um we're gonna have another webinar on the 29th uh with dr Elon going over um why blocking and swishing are important to be handled before resonance testing so we'll see you guys then pleasure being with you guys <laughs>